Hey, just kicking back in the sound room. Thought I'd just knock out a video here for you. Derek in North Carolina. Paul, if two amplifiers both measure a thousand watts at 1% THD, 40 hertz, and are, I'm not sure why you chose 40 hertz, but anyway, okay, um, and are the same class of design, what other specifications can we use to determine the better amplifier? Or is it only subjective? Measurements like damping factor, stereo separation, signal to noise ratio, crosstalk, etc. Um, I test a lot of high powered car amplifiers, and, and there are 1,000 watt amplifiers costing $100 and some costing $400. I understand the engineering differences, materials used, quality of components, but the curiosity of the wattage measurement versus perceived quality of sound is one I struggle with. Thank you for your videos. They're very helpful. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. As my regular listeners know, I struggle with the, the, the challenge of trying to measure everything that we hear, and, and we know that we can't. We know that we don't have the measurement tools to measure everything we hear. But we can get, there are, there are ways we can get fairly close, certainly in gross differences. So one of the things that you can look for in an amplifier is the basic design. And I hate to say this, because it sounds elitist and I don't want to become across as as elitist, but if you look at the company that is manufacturing the amplifier and their whole ethics, their their raison d'etre, my French is horrible, the reason for being is not high performance audio. Is it's it's like I'm gonna give you a lot of watts for a very little bit of money then you can be pretty sure that that amplifier probably isn't a great sounding product because no one set out to make it so. No one set out with that intention. So again, I don't want to be elitist or snobbish, but I would say that as in anything, you, you want to look to see what the designers were attempting to achieve. You wouldn't look to Frito Lay to make you know a great dish of some kind because you know they they make fast food they make you know or or well let's not get into that. <laughs> I, I'm a foodie and people get and I get you know anyway let's not let's not go there. Um, you know high end Twinkies I I don't know, um, but it has to match. So when, when you see a thousand watt car amplifier for a hundred bucks, you know somebody was in there doing their damnedest to pull every part not necessary to meet a certain qualification. Nobody listened to it. Nobody said, let's spend an extra five dollars on these components. Let's, let's do this or let's do that to make it a better sound. Um, so a company whose reason for being, a company whose goal is to make great sounding products will have a much better chance because that's what they're actually trying to achieve, right? So that's a good way to tell. Another way to tell is, um, well, measurements, yeah, that's, that's hard. See, I look at it as an engineer. When I look at a thousand watt amplifier, if, for instance, it was a class D, now a lot of thousand watt amps, that's a pretty big amp. So a lot of amplifiers, all car amplifiers are class D, right? And um, our, our 700 watt, which is close to 1,000, M700s, those are class D based. So I'd want to look and see what the construction is. What, what did the company do to take that high powered amplifier and make it sound good? And that, so that's looking a little deeper. So let's take Stellar in our case. We use an off the shelf, ICE module. ICE is a company that used to be owned by B&O and they sold off and now they're a separate company. And they've got some great, great engineers and technology. But a ICE module, if you buy it off, well you can't buy it off the shelf, but if you were to 
if there were a shelf to buy it from and you did, and you connected it up and you listened to it, you'd think, that's a pretty good sounding amp. Is it great? No. No, it's not. It, it sounds like a Class D amplifier. So you have to do things to it. You have to, in, in our case, we completely revamped the input stage. We, we changed the power supply. We did all of these things that made that amplifier sound as spectacular as it does. So that's no proof that it's going to sound good, but it's a damn good start. And those are the kind of things you want to look for. Now, as an engineer, I look at things like square wave performance. And companies don't usually publish that, but square wave performance can be a good indicator uh, of how an amplifier performs. We don't listen to square waves, but square waves, which are something that starts very quick, squares off, and then ends very quick, is very telling of an amplifier. And uh, again, e well, even we don't publish square wave performance, and we probably should. Now that I'm thinking about it, we probably should, because we, we, we work really hard at square wave performance. It, it, um, John Atkinson, the editor of Stereophile, who does testing, you'll see him routinely show you square wave performance of an amplifier under test. Why? Because that will tell you a whole bunch of things about how it's going to sound. A square wave passing through an amplifier at, say, a thousand cycles, if that amplifier has too much feedback or it's got uh, a few things wrong with it, you'll see a very sharp uh, bump in it and then you'll see like a spring on each side where it's whoa, 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 whoa. and and that's it's it's kind of out of control in the open loop sense and a well-behaved amplifier on a square wave test will just come up gently roll off on the top and look very nice and well behaved absolutely well behaved that's what it should look like and that's that's an indicator any amplifier you see that has that spring business on that is almost sure to sound a bit bright and harsh. That's at least been my experience. So those are the things that you can kind of look for. Not a lot in measurements, but those are the things you can kind of look for. Look at its pedigree. Look at what the designers were trying to accomplish and, you know, educate yourself a little bit as to what matters and what doesn't. And, and, and if you can get square wave response tests, that's a hell of a good indicator. And, and yes, damping factor is important, but that really is speaker dependent, et cetera. Anyway, enough. We've, we've babbled long enough. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for listening and watching. Um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.